Hey guys, so our real estate investing group really recently had a conversation about single family homes and renting them out. So a lot of people who are starting out in investing, they will buy a single family home simply because it is cheap. And they say, okay, I'm just gonna buy this house and I'm gonna rent it out and it's gonna be fantastic. Well, here's the problem with that. Typically single family homes are not designed to be rented out for uh, an investor. It doesn't produce enough cash flow. Single family homes, the highest and best use is most likely for someone to buy and live in. So that's why a lot of investors flip single family homes, unless you know how to do the other strategies. So if you purchase a single family home that's within a college area, that might be a good rental because college students will pay per room. And when you add all that up, the rent is higher than typical market rate. And also the parents will back up the student, they'll co-sign for it so that your income is more guaranteed. Also, if you live in a vacation area, single family home could be a great rental if you do it by the day or by the week. Think Airbnb. And then finally, a single family home, like I said, was great for flipping or for buying. But there's another strategy that a lot of people don't know of or to know to employ, which is to lease to own. So this is where a person will lease out the property in expectations of buying it a few years later. Right now, maybe their credit's not bad, maybe their income's not there, or maybe they don't have the down payment. But through the lease-to-own strategy, it allows them to work towards buying the house. Now, you, as the property owner, you like this idea because there's a couple of ways you make money. Of course, you rent out the property, and what you do is you rent out the property for a little bit more money than you would have if it wasn't a rent-to-own. And then that little extra, you apply towards the to, towards the purchase of the property. And also prior to, you'll collect a, I don't wanna call it a deposit, it's more of a, a fee. Let's call it an option fee. So the just for that option to buy it three years from now, you charge them a fee. Let's call it 5,000, 10,000, it's up to you. It's up to what they'll pay for it. But that fee is non-refundable fee for the option to buy it. And then again, like I said, you charge more rent and then you apply the extra towards the purchase of the house. Well, here's the stat. Most people don't buy the house at the end. So then when you add in the non-refundable fee plus the extra mortgage payments that, or I'm sorry, the extra rent payment that you collected, your rate of return is much higher. But if you don't know these strategies and you don't hang out with a group of investors who talk about these things on a daily basis, you may be cutting yourself short because the same exact property could be yielding you a lot more money. It's just that you didn't know how to do so and you didn't ask and nobody was there to guide you. So that's why I find real estate education so important and that's why I find networking so important because you find out things like this and otherwise you're gonna to try to do it on your own and the same property which could have generated you thousands of dollars more isn't because you wanted to go out and do it on your own. And I guess you'll learn the hard way. But to each their own, hope this video helped. If you have a single family home and you're renting it out, you may want to reconsider what you're doing. But if it's working for you, great. I don't, I don't want to knock the hustle. Keep on doing what you're doing. Keep on investing. Keep on learning. And keep on building a future for you and your family. All right, guys. See you in the next video.